name is Sean Tucker, and as part of my day job, I shoot products for companies. And there's a lot online that you can find about how to shoot small products on tabletops with a white background and just some speed lights, but there's not a lot to show you how to shoot something large, like a sofa or a bed or a dining set. So I want to give you some basic tips and tricks for companies who are confused about how do you get good images of your products so that you can get them loaded onto your website for sale. In part one, I'm going to show you how do you light your product and what kind of camera settings you use. Part two, I'm going to show you how to cut that product out onto a white background. And then part three, I'm going to show you how you can recolor your product. Maybe you're someone who makes sofas and you've got 20, 30 different color options of your fabric. You want to be able to take those shots that you spent loads of time over shooting that one sofa and recolor it to all your different color options so you've got uniform shots across your site but in all your different color variations. So these are just some basic tips and tricks on how you can shoot your large products well and load them onto your website. Okay, so in episode one, we've uh, shot in the studio, we've lit the product, got the camera settings correct and got our raw image. And then in episode two, we brought it into Lightroom, made some corrections and then took it into Photoshop, did a bit of retouching, cut out and we've got our drop shadow. So we've got our finalized product image, but you may stock uh, chairs or sofas with lots of different colors of fabrics. And you might want to take the images that you spent time on and recolor them to different options. A couple of warnings before you think about this. The first is that there's a limit between how much you can recolor. So you need to be careful about, for example, you can't recolor a black sofa all the way to cream. It's The tones are just too far apart. By the time you pull those tones all the way from that very, very dark to very light color, you're going to have lost a load of detail. So it's best to shoot your darkest color, your lightest color, and a middle color, and then to recolor between those so that you're not pulling your tones too far on each. So we shot a fairly light colored sofa. So uh, we're going to recolor that to some, some lighter colors. The other caveat you need to have is that whilst this is a technique you can use to recolor your fabrics, it's not gonna change the look of your fabric. So you need to also photograph your fabric options. You can't take a coarse hessian looking fabric and turn it into something that looks like a velvet material that you want on your sofa, because it just reflects light differently. There are people who can do that, but they will charge you a lot of money and it will be hours and hours of work. It's just not worth it. So photograph your different fabric options and try and get a light, a dark, and a middle color for each of those. So we've got our, um, our image which we worked on before and we're going to go in and we're going to open and here we go, there's our cutout image we were working on previously in Photoshop. Okay, and now we've got our fabric swatches. Often you've got physical fabric swatches like these. Best thing to do is when we want to uh, recolor, you need to position your desk somewhere near a natural light source. You don't want to have window light coming in from outside, nice natural daylight mixed with a yellow tungsten light on your ceiling. So if you can, turn all your lights off, get yourself by a good natural light window and, and eliminate different colors of light bouncing around the room and you'll see why we need to do that in a minute. So we're just going to recolor the sofa that we were working on, the chair that we're working on, to these four colors. So we need to start by getting these physical swatches into our computer digitally. And we're going to do that by photographing them. So I just want to lay them out on a desk. I'm, on my desk is great because it's a white desk. You might want to try and find something or put a piece of paper down, something that's a, um, a nice light neutral color that's going to give a good backdrop and not interfere with your colors too much. And the other thing I want to put in the middle of my swatches is my photographer's gray card again, just to make sure I'm getting my color accurate. So I've laid those out on the desk. I've got my old 550D here, which is just a crop sensor camera. It's great for just shooting these sort of swatches. So I need to make sure that my, my white balance is on daylight. And I just want to take a shot just of these swatches sitting on my desk. And it's looking a little dull, so I'm just going to brighten that up a touch. Great. And that's now too bright. So once we've got our swatches photographed, we're just going to take them into our computer, pop them in the side here, and import them into Photoshop. A lot of people try and take these sort of swatches and, and manually sort of try and get the color correct by putting them next to it, but I just find it's not a technical enough, it's not an accurate enough 
way to ensure that you're getting the correct color on your image. So let's get rid of iPhoto, trying to import it for a second. Um, and let's have a look in here. So here's my card. Let's jump across. And there we go. So there are our swatches. Okay, so let's bring them into Photoshop. I'm going to keep these swatches here the whole time and you'll see why I still want to be able to assess what I'm doing against these actual physical swatches in natural light. It's a good way to sort of gauge am I getting close. So there are my swatches in Photoshop. First thing I need to do is to make sure I'm going to duplicate the layer first and then on top of that just apply a levels layer. And in the same way that I use the gray card in Lightroom, I can use it in Photoshop, just in levels here. This central uh, eyedropper tool is my gray point eyedropper. I'm just going to grab that central eyedropper and just click here on my gray card. And that's going to give me an accurate color. It's going to snap everything in based on, uh, based on this being a mid gray point, a correct mid gray point. And that looks pretty good. So let me stamp visible. That's Command Alt and Shift E. Uh, control alt shift e on a Windows computer just to duplicate that layer on top that we've got now with the correct white balance set in there and then I'm going to duplicate it once more just so I'm not I've got a point to go back to and now the problem that I have in selecting color is if I just click here on my foreground color I get my eyedropper tool but watch what happens just clicking on one of these swatches I will get this color but if I move just slightly to the left I'm getting very very different colors as I click around because there's highlights and shadows and there's bumps in your fabric and different points which are going to give you different values so I can't just click there and think that I'm going to get the correct color what I need to do is average out that color so that I'm I'm collecting the average value of that swatch that I've got so with that top layer selected I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to apply a blur and a Gaussian blur and I want it to be so that the edges are still sort of there in my in my swatches They're not bleeding into each other but it's getting rid of some of the I can't see any of the stitching anymore um, in that swatch so let's just hit OK it was about 30 pixels and I just want to apply another layer again to start to even it out again and this time I'm going to go to filter pixelate and mosaic this is going to turn it into sort of a pixelated image which is great because within each of those squares I'm going to have the average color of the pixels that are lying underneath to hit OK. I need to be very, very careful I'm not selecting any colors from the edges of these swatches because that's obviously my desk bleeding into that product. So I need to pick from somewhere in the center of each of these, but that's going to give me that good average color. So grab your notebook and you're going to take down some of these values as you move around. So let's start with this kind of dusty rose color here. And we're going to hit our foreground color and we're going to select one of these pixels right here. And that's looking fairly good. And this is the point where it's going to be good to hold up your swatch in your left hand and just be looking at this color that I've got here and assessing in this natural light, is that pretty close? And to me, yes, it's pretty close. It needs to be slightly brighter maybe. So I'm going to drag it up. If I drag around on this square now, I'm not going to change the color. All I'm going to do is I'm going to either change the brightness or darkness, depending on if I move it up or down, or left or right, I'm going to change the saturation, how much that color is in there. But the color should remain the same. So I can do little tweaks within here just to fine tune that selection at the end. And we can see there we've got B8A. 5B2, that's my hex code for that value, which I need to make a note of. And I'm going to go through each of these and I'm going to select the color value of each and make a note in my book. And then we'll go back to the image. Okay, so I've got my hex codes written down here. And we're going to save those there for a second, leave our swatches next to us. The first thing we need to do with our image is we need to duplicate the layer. So we're going to work on this top layer here. We need to work for a second to separate out everything on this image that's fabric because we're only obviously recoloring fabric. We're not recoloring the wood or the brass studs. So it's going to take a little time just to separate out that fabric from everything else. And it's back to our pen tool. And I gave you a quick overview in the first part of how to use it, but I've said there are tons of tutorials online which will give you a far more detailed overview. So I'm just going to start moving around and outlining everything here that is fabric, just to separate it out. Uh, at the moment, I'm just leaving those brass buttons in because I'm going to do those separately. And I'll show you how we do that in a minute. And I'm also going to do you the favor of fast forwarding this because it's pretty boring. Okay. 
Okay, so we're coming to the end now of our selection. And just that last little point again, exactly the same as last time in the previous tutorial. Just look for that little circle, it means you're about to close off your part. So click there, zoom out. Same again to create that mask. We're going to right click in the middle and go make selection. And then we're going to come down the bottom here and hit our layer mask, which is going to mean that our, if we turn off the layer underneath, we can see we've just masked out our material which is a great start but we also need to get rid of these brass studs so how do we do that we make sure our layer mask is selected and remember that black is going to hide and white is going to reveal so we need to hide these white studs here so let's take our paintbrush flip this over so we're painting with black and come up to our brush here and go to 100% hardness so we're working with a very hard edge and take our flow back up to 100 we're going to zoom in on some of these studs here and what we're going to do is we're just going to paint with black. Let's like use our um, square bracket keys just to change the size of our of our brush here. And we're just going to go in and just paint black on our layer mask, which is going to get rid of our brass studs. And we're going to head the whole way around. And just be quite careful. You don't want to go over the edge. What you want to do just keep the uh, shadow just at the edge of that stud as well in place because obviously that's a shadow that needs to appear on the material. Just getting rid of that brass the whole way around and just to create that mask. The only thing present on this mask is going to be our fabric. And I'm going to speed this up for you because it's going to be quite boring. Okay, so I've gone around all my buttons here and I've just masked those out by painting in black there and you can see on this layer now without any layers selected underneath that all we have sitting on this layer is just the material of the sofa. We can turn that layer under underneath to see what we've got and on the top that's just what is selected. Okay, so the next thing we need to do again we want to do non-destructive editing so let's duplicate our masked layer again and let's go up to image adjustments and desaturate. And this is just so we can see what we've got in terms of just the color and the detailing. The point at this stage is to try and bring back as much detail through the image, highlights and shadows and everything as possible before we start applying color to it. So we know that throughout the image it's going to be looking uh, pretty good. So let's go to adjustments and levels. And at this point we want to start dragging our mid-tones to the right. And the reason for that is if you read a histogram correctly the higher peaks in this is where most of the information is in your image. So you can see you've got a hard line on the side here, that's how white in the image. And then about here is where most of our image is sitting, these two peaks. So if we drag our midtones across, we're pulling back those details. Some of the highlights here are a little clipped for me. So I do want to take those and drop them down. And I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to grab these output levels. I'm going to grab the highlight slider here. I'll show you on an extreme version what it does. It just drops your highlights right down. We don't want to do that. We just want to pull them back just so we've got as much of that as possible. We're basically trying at this point to turn that material into a sort of middling gray so that we can, we can pull it around all over the place when we come to recoloring it. So around about there looks good. Maybe we can crunch our shadows up a little bit. Uh, we need to watch in here in some of these details though because that's also starting to look a little flat. And we're getting some spiking in those um, gaps between the fabric there as well. So let's just pull this through. And that's looking fairly good at the moment. We can bring back a bit more contrast later if we want to. And hit OK. Let's duplicate again so that we can just save that gray layer that we were using. And we're going to start now with the first of our swatches. This swatch is called Blush. So that's what the supplier calls it. Um, I'm going to hold it right here so I can see in good natural light. And I haven't got any mixed kind of yellowing lights above. I'm looking at it in good, uh, solid, natural light daylight coming through this window. And with this uh, top layer selected, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Gradient Map. Uh, this is a technique that I learned by finding out how people turn those old black and white photographs back into color by selecting portions of the image and using gradient maps. So I've nicked that from them. Thanks very much. Um, here in your gradient map, you want to double click your gradient. And at the moment, it's reversed. That's why it looks negative. It's going from white on the left to black on the right. We need to switch that around. So we need to click here for black to white. And that's turning it back to our gray that we had before. So we've got in our deepest shadows, we've got blacks. Right up to our widest highlights, we've got uh, pure white there and a gray tone all the way through. So to add our color, we're going to double click 
just under the center of the gradient here and that's going to bring up our hex code dialog you can see it's pure white at the moment looks ridiculous but what we want to do is we want to add the hex code that we pulled for this blush swatch so in this case that's b3 a 5 a b and that's going to give us our blush color now this is why i need this swatch in front of me because i can see already that that is too light so i'm looking at this in the light here by the window and I'm going to start to dial this in. And I've got a few controls I can use to do that. My mid-tone here, if I pull this to the right, I'm going to start to darken that image down because I'm introducing more of these dark colors across the spread. If I pull it to the left, I'm going to make it lighter. And that's because it's going to pull more of these light colors in. So that's going to control the sort of brightness of our product. And if I sit about here, I think I'm looking fairly good. And what I'm trying to estimate is what this fabric looks like under those same studio conditions. So I'm checking here for color accuracy, but I'm also trying to interpolate a little bit what would it look like under the studio lights. These two little circle nodes in between are very, very important as well, because what they're gonna do is they're gonna mix in how much color we're mixing in compared to how much black on this side or how much white on this side. So I can see that in these fabrics here, there's a bit too much black. It's getting a bit too spiky. So I'm gonna take this little node here and I'm gonna drag it to the left and that's gonna pull out some of that black in that fabric stitching. I don't want too much because I still want it in those shadows. And then maybe I can see it's getting lighter because I'm doing that. So back to this mid-tone, I'm going to pull it to the right a little bit, darken it back down. And I might say that there's also a little bit too much white fleck in there because there's none in this material here. And I want to get rid of some of that. So I'm going to grab this little node and pull it to the right. And that's pushing out some of that white and pulling in some of that color. And that to me is looking pretty good. So right there, and I'm checking my swatch in the daylight the whole time, and I'm checking my image, and I think that's pretty great. So I'm going to go OK, OK. I'm going to head up here, File, Save As, and I'm going to go JPEG, and I'm going to call this one Blush. And that's the first of my images saved. And now if I've got a, a pile of 30, 40, 50 swatches, which I often do have, I can start to move quite fast with this at this point. All I'm going to do is go back one step in my history to duplicate layer. And I've got my gray uh, level on top there. I'm going to go down again to adjustments, gradient map. And I'm going to move a bit faster this time. I'm going to click on my gradient, select black to white, double click in the center there where I want to add my color. And this one here is called Wedgwood. I'm going to go C8E. I'm lying, C8C, ED1. And that's going to give me the color that I pulled off this, the digital hex code I pulled off in the previous steps. Hit OK. I can see straight away it's way too bright. So I want to pull my midtone right across here, my color, so that it's starting to come back in and darken down a bit. By doing that, I can see I'm introducing too much black into that stitching. No problem. I'm going to take my little midpoint here and I'm going to drag it to the left and it's going to pull it out. I can see also that there's a little bit too much white in these highlights as well. So I'm just going to make sure this is selected here and then grab my little midpoint and pull it to the right and pull out some of that white. And that to me is looking pretty good. OK. OK. And I'm going to go to save as JPEG. And this one, as I said, was called Wedgwood and save and we just do one more so you can see again back up to duplicate layer so just back one step so back to gray gradient map click black to white and mark our center point the next one here is called pebble and it's bbb c a f again just remember these are the codes whoops for some reason that's not going in uh, bbb uh, 6 a f these were the codes that I wrote down in the previous step, just those hex codes, remember? I can see again, so that's looking too bright, so I'm going to drag my midpoint over. And that's looking closer to what I want. I'm going to take my blacks out a little bit. You can see in the stitching it's coming in a little bit there. And I don't think I'm going to do anything to the whites this time. I think it looks pretty good, actually. It's giving me some nice roll-off, and it's not looking like a, a white fleck like it did on the previous one. It's looking pretty good. Okay, okay. And I'm going to go File, Save As, down to JPEG, and Pebble. You can see we're slowly starting to build up a category of the different colors that we've got based on our base image. 
And if you head straight the way through all your products like this, every product you've cut out, you created your drop shadow in that second stage, you're going to go through each of those, duplicate those layers, mask out your fabrics, turn it to gray and start to pull around your levels and then apply that gradient map for each. At the end of it, you're going to have a set with each of those different shots you had and for each of those different shots, you're going to have all your different color ranges as well. So hopefully by the end of this stage, you're going to have you're going to have turned a shoot that might have taken you, at the end of the day, might have taken you half an hour to get really good shots into multiplying it 20, 30, 40 times depending on your color options. You're going to have a nice batch of images to place on your website. Thank you.